Hello, hello, this is Norma Jo. Okay. This is Cherry Eyes. Cherry Eyes is a little long. But, uh, I'm gonna read through it, see what goes on. Like I said, this, I was 14, so it must have been, like, uh, it was like ninth grade, you know. I think that's what I remember. I remember I remember that building that we we had school in. Anyway, in association with this story. So, without further ado, we're going to read Cherry Eyes. Okay. And there's no cover for this one. It's just like that. All right. Here I am pacing back and forth across this room like I'm beyond drunk on catnip oh shit here we go with the animal shit again I kinda think um this might take place in the same universe as the fucking uh werewolf one but I don't know I can barely even walk straight pathetic but my thoughts just floated away no I wasn't really pacing around in the kitchen like a dope fiend I was somewhere else the problem was where was that um there was something missing I was lightheaded, but there was something else. It was like a dull ache in my stomach, like I'd already been killed and gutted. And I was all open and empty, like one of those animals they cut apart in schools. Yeah, with the pins and stuff, that sounded about right. And I was just too drunk to notice. Oh, screw it, that made no sense. I couldn't believe I actually... I actually thought that seriously. Stupid. I tripped over something. See, I got really into, like, in high school, I mean, you have to remember, this is, like, the peak of, like, the emo age, you know? Maybe a little after the peak. But, um, still going pretty strong, you know, and would for a few more years. And, um, yeah, I was really into, like, people doing drugs, uh, people, like, being schizo, um, people not knowing if they're in a dream or not, people, um, you know, just weird, like I said, just mind fucky shit. I was, I've always been into mind fucky shit, but, yeah, when I was younger, it was more supernatural, like, uh, dimensional travel and stuff like that, and then as I got a little older, it was, uh, it was more about drugs, you know, and stuff like that, and, um, anyway, yeah, so, moving along. I don't want to interrupt this story too much because I talked so much through the last two and this one's a little longer so, you know. Um, let me see. I tripped over something bound to happen sooner or later and banged into a chair. The next minute I was trying to dig my nails into the hard surface, holding onto that chair for dear life. Oh, that's the picture. That's the picture right there. Remember how I told you I had a picture of Paige holding onto the back of a chair and like sweating and stuff? This is, I think that's this scene right here. The phone was ringing. I knocked it over like an idiot and picked it up off the table. Oh, landlines. We still had a landline back then. <laughs> and I had the number memorized. And I had my best friend's number memorized. And my mom's. I kind of still have my mom's work phone memorized. But, yeah. <gasps> it was a different time. I used to call my best friend every day on the phone. No, he texts. Um... Phone was ringing. I knocked it over like an idiot and picked it up off the table. Hello? I realized I probably sounded drunk. Fabulous. Hello? I guess he said it like that. You, you, what's up, hum, what's up, homeboy? Oh my god. Pretend like that you didn't just hear that. Uh, Naro, the last person I wanted to talk to. Well, why does somebody you hate have your number? I guess they're frenemies. I realized I was still holding the chair, so I let go of it. The floor didn't come out from under, under me. I sat up straight, shook off, put the phone back up to my ear. Now that I could think clearly, I realized he was saying something. Huh, what? Are you okay? You don't sound good. No, um, I'm alright, I answered, brushing my fingers through my coffee brown hair. Now I reminded myself, I'm alright now. Hey, hey, I became aware of what was going on. Why are you calling me? It's nine in the morning, shouldn't you be asleep? Um, I guess he works the PM shift like I do, and why is he doing drugs at 9 a.m.? Can't even lie, I've done that shit, but, you know, whatever. Um, he 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 giggled. That's what it says. That's what I was saying. Look outside. I peered through the window shutters. It was pouring rain and pitch black almost. Beautiful, isn't it? Naro's funny high-pitched voice said in my ear, Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yes. I closed the shutter and went back to the table. Beautiful. If you think I'm going out in that weather, you're crazy. 
No such luck. I'm coming over to your place. Oh boy. Hee hee hee. I know you're just dying to see me. Paige. Paige. Always cleaning yourself. I almost jumped out of my skin. My heart was still racing when I saw Naro standing in the doorway. Oh, that was him again. He takes after his Japanese side and his looks, and like most of his kind, his skin is white like paper and his eyes are heavily dark rimmed and cherry red. Oh yeah, I think he's supposed to be a vampire or some shit. I was about to be like, this is almost like racist or something, but um, nah. I think he's supposed to be a vampire. Oh yeah, here's the very next sentence. Also, like most vampires, he's got a nice figure. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Holy shit. That's fucking funny. <laughs> See, so many times I start to talk and like, I'm so happy this is my show. Because if my dad was here, he would give me like the fucking nth degree. Like, why don't you just fucking shut up and read, you know? I'm happy this is my show, this is my apartment, and I can be fucking stupid on my own show because literally it's like so many times if I would just read the next fucking sentence, like, I wouldn't have to say what I just said, you know, but that's the way I read, I'm like right there, you know, anyway, um, so yeah, um, geez, don't you ever knock? Don't you ever lock your doors? And here's the other weird thing about it. I mean, I I know the economy wasn't as bad as, as it is now back in 20, uh, 2004 when this was written and also before. But I always, I mean, obviously I was a young kid. I didn't know shit about rent yet, so I was guessing everything. And I always have these characters who are supposed to be, like, broke, but then yet they, like, have, like, a whole, like, house to themselves, you know? Kind of like when you watch shit like Taxi, like the TV show Taxi, you know? Like, I always say to my dad when we're watching that shit together, I'm like, it's so funny how, like, they're supposed to be in New York in the 70s, and they drive taxi cabs. Taxi cabs are sometimes, according to motherfucking, um, what's-his-face, um, what's the name of the actor who plays their boss, the little scumbag guy? Uh, well, his name is Louie in the show. What is the actor's name? I forget. Um, anyway, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Oh, the other night, um, Tracy was the name of the city, or the town, city, place, whatever. I was trying to remember that I was trying not to say Travis. It's Tracy that I meant to say. Tracy is further out east than I thought. My friend used to say she was going to go visit her parents, like in Tracy. I didn't realize. It's like a far... It's, it looks far on the map. I've never driven to Tracy, but anyway. Um, what is that guy's name? It's not, uh, what is his fucking name? His name is, um, Danny DeVito, right? Pretty sure that's his name. Anyway, he would say shit like, if you don't listen to me, your car is not going to have any brakes, and the window is not going to roll down in the summer, and it's not going to have any heat in the winter, and shit like that. I don't know, that was a quote from some episode, I don't remember. But anyway, they're living in these shitty conditions, it's a shitty a job, trying to accomplish their life goals and shit. And then, um, and then, yeah, they have really nice apartments, like when they go over everyone's apartment, everyone's apartment is fucking nice, and they go over uh, Bobby's place, his place is nice. I think Alex, I don't, I don't think I remember Alex's place being nice. What's her face? The chick, um, Nardo, I think is her name. Her place is fucking nice. Tony's place is nice. Um, the fat chick's name, the fat chick's, uh, and she's not that fat, by the way. But, uh, her place is nice. Um, anyway. That's what I'm trying to say. It's the same as here. Like, I always said these characters who are supposed to be so down bum on their luck. And yet, like, they had nice places, or... I mean, I don't say that they're nice in the story, but, you know, like, they be having their own house, kitchen they don't share with another person. And then later on, I got with it, like, it would be, like, people sharing rooms and stuff. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to talk too much over this story, but let me get on with it. Okay. It was locked, I growled. He pulled off his rain poncho and I pulled on my t-shirt. I pulled on my t-shirt, so he was walking around topless, I guess, and stood up. You know, I bet there are a lot of... Uh, <laughs> that's out 
out there who just adore seeing you sitting on your living room floor half naked and licking yourself. Oh my god, cool it, Naro. He laughed. Can't, I just got up. Oh, that's why he said he should be asleep at 9 in the morning, because he's a vampire. Okay, it makes sense now. That made no sense to me, but I didn't ask him about it. He came over into the dark living room. The cherry red eye is standing out from the rest of him. The only other color on his body was the red hourglass with spider legs. Oh, I had a picture of this dude, too. Um, it was a symbol of something, and it was on the shoulder of all his clothes. Oh, it's on the shoulder of his clothes? It's a patch? It's not like a tattoo? Anyway, whatever. He was wearing all black today. Huh, stereotype much? I asked. Hey, black is the stalker's color. He answered all sassily. Plus it's slick, he said with a wink. Okay, Mr. Agent, want to go down to the basement? Most of the time when Naro was over, we were in the basement. It was cool and cozy, and best of all, it was dark. As we trotted down the short stairs together, the light string touched my face, but I just brushed it away. The rats were squeaking in their cages. Out of politeness, I pulled one out and offered it to him. <laughs> Holy shit, they're eating rats. Like, uh, it's like Renfield. Thanks, he replied, the first sincere thing he'd said to me since he got here. He licked his bottom lip and buried his fangs in the little ball of fur. <laughs> okay, so so far we have, um, I don't know what you call dropping the F word. Insensitive language and animal cruelty. <laughs> The first bite snapped its neck, leaving him free to savor its blood without the hellish squealing. <laughs> uh, I had to read that a second time. Naro's cherry eyes closed gently. I was pacing the room. Are you gonna eat? he asked, licking drops of blood from the corner of his mouth. Um, from the way his lip was curled back, I could see one of his ivory-colored fangs. I loved that word ivory back then, I guess. Thin and pointed in the dark. I shook my head. No, I'm not hungry. His pretty slanted eyes closed again, but almost immediately snapped open again. Hey, did you sew that? I followed his gaze to a little folded up piece of material on an empty rat shelf. With a grin, I trotted over and held up the sleeveless shirt. How do you like it? It's good. Thanks. I looked down at it and then put it back. It still needs some work. Did, uh, he hesitated. Did Connor teach you that? We both tensed in silence. I could hear my tongue run over my lip. Yeah. Please, just change the subject. Talk about something else. Psh, been there. But I knew that with Naro, that was like putting a cat in a room full of dogs and just praying it got out unhurt. <laughs> you think he's alright? I doubt it where he is, I muttered. When I looked up from the floor, he just looked so sad. Like he was about to cry. Something about it made me feel sick. I realized I was tugging at my coffee brown hair. Uh, it's not your fault, you know, he pressed. He was determined to finish this on a good note, but the truth of it was that he was digging himself deeper and deeper. Yeah, I know. Have you seen, en have you seen Enid lately? These are all characters I used to roleplay as, by the way. Enid and Connor are, were two of my roleplay characters I used to have. Um... And I used to mostly use Connor for Crazy House roleplay, so I'm guessing that's uh, where he's at now in this story. Uh, my gaze shot from the floor to his pale face, just visible in the dark. Um, yeah, I saw him. I spat viciously about a month back when he said he never wanted to see my face again. Uh, grown men having high schoolish catty fights. Isn't that great? His mouth was hanging slightly open, cherry eyes wide. He had no idea. How could he? I realized he still had the little ball of fluff, the rat, cl clasped in one white hand. I closed my bright yellow, green eyes, cat's eyes, and I dropped my gaze away. Sorry. I moved back up the stairs in the dark. The door creaked open at a light nudge. It hadn't been fully closed. I stepped up into the doorway. Houston, we have a problem. The rain had stopped and the sun was shining bright. Ah, oh, fuck. Guess I gotta stay in the basement. Time jump. I walked into the basement, flooded with red light. Not my basement, of course. The basement of some building on the strip mall. 
Do strip malls even have basements? Actually, you know it's funny? One of the stories I was writing not too long ago, probably like, you know, last year, but not a full year ago, if you know what I'm saying, like, um, I was writing this one story, it was supposed to be a, oh my god, I can't believe I'm about to say this shit, it was a parody of Metal Gear Rising, which I think, okay, I'm kind of confused on this, because I know there's Revengeance, and I'm pretty sure Rising and Revengeance are the same thing, but I'm not quite sure, I don't know. Knowing video games, they probably like release it twice or something, and they're like almost identical but slightly different or some bullshit like that. But anyways, it was a parody of that, and it was also it was like half Metal Gear Rising and half um, the head that wouldn't die. You know, it was like because I mean, like that's how I saw Metal Gear Rising. Like when I first saw it, I was just like. How do you- I was just like, how do you get from, like, <laughs> how do you get from the first Metal Gear, which is basically, like, a knockoff Rambo slash Deer Hunter slash every other fucking war movie, like, how do you get from there to a fucking cyborg fighting robotic giant Pokemon Digimon things with, like, a fucking, like, pinup boy's head? stuck on the robot's body. So, obviously it was a natural, like, connection to the head that wouldn't die. So I was parroting them both at the same time. Like, combining them, you know? But, um, now I don't remember why I started t saying this. Oh, I remember. <laughs> because of the basement and the strip mall thing. So yeah, in uh, that story, the four scientists that created him um, um, in this, in the parody version, the, his name's not Raiden, or Raiden, it's, uh, Ollie Ray. I'm not even gonna <laughs> get into why he's called Ollie Ray, because that's, <laughs> that's, like, a part of the story, but any anyway, uh, the four scientists that create Ollie Ray, um, uh, <laughs> have their secret lair hidden underneath a strip mall in, like, uh, I mean, it's not a basement, it's like a fucking underground laboratory hidden underneath a strip mall building, uh, which is modeled after the strip mall I get my, you know, I go to for shopping stuff. But, um, that's the only other occurrence I know of a basement being in a strip mall. Cause what the fuck is that shit? Like, this is when I still lived in the city. I didn't, now I live, now where I live, there's actual strip malls everywhere, all over the place. You can't escape them. So now I know the truth of strip malls. But back then, of course, I was strictly a city kid. So I was probably just thinking like, yeah, our big, big, huge city malls have uh, basements, basement levels and stuff. Parking garages in the basement. No, uh, why not? You know, <laughs> it's totally different. Anyways, <laughs> eighteen forty-two right now. That's how many minutes and seconds I got. Holy shit! And the seconds are just counting up. I'm never gonna finish this story. Okay. Oh, back from that bullshit to this regularly scheduled programming. Cherry eyes. Where was it? Uh, the, ba the basement of some building in the strip mall. It would so be funny if it was shared universe and like on the other side of the wall where he is are like what are their fucking names? Samantha, Natats, Dr. Strangelove, and um who else was in that mix? Oh, what's his face? The uh the other dude. Um Teddy Bear Cake. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about- maybe that's a story I'll read on camera one of these days. That that's another one that never got finished. That's- that's the way things go with me. This shit- a lot of them don't ever get finished. But, <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway. The music was blaring. People were dancing all over the place. What the fuck? So, okay, so it's a club. Once again, I should have just read on. 
So it's a there is a club underneath the strip mall in a base in a basement underneath the strip mall. There's a, a club. Okay, you can really tell I'm a city kid. Um, I stripped off my light jacket and tied it around my waist. There was one girl I could see that was sitting down against the wall. She looked content. She looked content, so let me go bother her. Hey, I said sitting down at her side. <laughs> Typical man. Um, the girl was a hippie. <laughs> An obvious picture out of a book kind of hippie. She had on a knee-length brown dress, jeans underneath, flower and peace patches sewn on. A daisy was clipped into her long blonde hair, which the tips of lay on the chair by her ass like a horse's tail. <laughs> she turned her head and smirked at me behind rose glasses. <laughs> I had a picture of her, too. One of her titties was out in the picture. I'm, I should show that on camera if I find it. Just here for the booze, right? She said. I laughed. Maybe not. The dress was sleeveless and her shoulders were bare. She didn't seem to be sweating. Maybe she hadn't been dancing. But it was still so hot in here. I pulled my hair behind one ear, the ear close to the girl, wishing my hair was shorter and didn't cover the back of my neck. Oh, but it's so sexy, though. Um, oh, pretty, she said suddenly, fingering the pair of hoops in my ear. <laughs> this is a note to you, all you guys out there, get your ears pierced and wear little hoops like this. Not big old hoops, but just like little ones like this, or uh, one on the other side is a little smaller, like this. Girls love them. Girls love them. You want girls to want to touch you? Get your ears pierced. And wear, th wear those. Don't wear no fucking little dime fake diamond studs. Those are ugly. Wear little hoops like this. That's the way to go. Anyway, PSA over. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. I forgot I was wearing those. I stared at her and she giggled like a little kid. Oh, God. <laughs> her other hand crawled up the other side of my face under my hair. Man, she's really fucking going for it. What's your name? Paige. It seemed rude not to say anything back. Well, yeah, was he just gonna... Like, what the fuck kind of shit is that? You're gonna approach a girl in a nightclub, sit down next to her, and try to strike up conversation, like, as if you're really interested, and then when she says, what's your name, you're just gonna fucking ignore her? Like, yeah, it's fucking rude. Why would you even think about doing that? Um, what, how about you? A cap. Her head tilted to the side. What happened to this one? I brushed her hand away. And ran my own fingers over my velvety ear. Oh, <laughs> his velvet ear. <laughs> but it was just the two holes on that side. Uh, long story. I've got the time, Cap said, smirking and sitting back in her chair. I sighed and looked up. Some guy was staring at me like he had a problem. <laughs> like I was kissing another boy or something. Damn, a little bit of homophobia. But it's realistic, actually. I mean, Paige isn't saying that he has a problem with guys kissing guys. He's just saying that this douchebag probably has a problem with gay guys. So, um, you know, he's just being realistic, I guess. But I just stared back and he went away. <laughs> that also wouldn't happen in real life, usually. You stare back and the person comes over and they're like, you got a fucking problem? Don't stare back at people. It's a bad idea. Unless you like fighting. Or unless you live in a place where people are more chill than that. But then why would they be staring in the first place? God, why does my arm feel so stiff? <sighs> Don't do drugs, you guys. <laughs> Just kidding. I swear to God, sometimes on like the inside of my arm right here, I get like really stiff. Like it feels like, I don't know, the blood is getting cut off somehow or something, which is weird because there's nothing I'm wearing like the loosest clothes. I always wear like super loose clothes, so there's nothing like cutting off my circulation. But I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, where was I? Um, uh, I just stared back. And he went away. It's uh, about a friend. He's locked up in a uh, redemption. Her eyes widened behind the glasses. That's horrible. Um, I looked down at the ground. Yeah. She grabbed my hand. Her skin... I think if I just switch position... Uh, if I just switch position, I'll be okay. Yeah, that's better. Uh, I looked down at the ground. Yeah. She grabbed my hand. Her skin was soft and cold. 
and her nails were painted bright pink. Let's go somewhere quieter. Um. Time jump. So tell me more about this friend of yours, said Cap. We were down in the basement. I think it's funny how people call Captain America Cap. That's total non sequitur, but, you know, whatever. We were down in the basement. She was stretched out on the middle of the floor, and I was leaning against one of the rat shelves. Starting his place again. Our glasses were off and on the floor by her side. The question caught me by surprise. Man, she just, they met in the club and she's just coming over his place. This is a more trusting world. You gotta remember, this is two, 2004, so, and I was in San Francisco, so it's a gentler world, I suppose. Um, uh, what do you want to know? Um, oh, I don't know, just give me some background info or something. And she's just, like, randomly asking about his friend who's, like, locked up in the nut house. She doesn't ask him any question about himself. Have you noticed that? She's just like, yeah, tell me about your fucking friend who's, like, locked up. Anyway. Uh, you know, you're pretty brazen for a hippie, I replied. <laughs> Basically what I was just saying. She laughed like a wind chime. What? <laughs> Fabulous. So tell me about him. I sighed and rolled my eyes. Why did I bring her to my flat in the first place? Flat, so they're British now. <laughs> well, also, if you're in a flat, there's no basement. 14-year-old me. <laughs> there's no basement in a flat. A flat is flat. One floor, one single level. No basement. Unless he has the bottom one, but... I've never heard of that, having a bottom floor flat with a basement. I don't know. Whatever. This is, he, Not to mention he's part cat and his friend is a vampire. That doesn't matter. Just the shit about the housing matters. <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I? I'm never gonna finish the story this rate. Uh, why did I bring her to my flat in the first place? Well, there would be no getting out of this. His name's Connor. We were in a group together. Sort of a pack, you know. Well, things were going great. I think this is shared universe with the, well, with the werewolf thing. Because he, he, this guy's part cat. Well, things were going great, but this one day we got chased down by these dogs. No idea why. They just came out of nowhere. Cap was leaning forward, captivated. I gave a little laugh at that. The story wasn't that interesting. Com maybe she has a boring life. Maybe she's from the suburbs. Hardcore, like, conservative suburbs or some shit. Who knows? Come on, Shears. Don't stop now. Alright, so we ran behind this fence, but Connor couldn't make it over. <laughs> Connor's a little dude, by the way. He's like 5'2". That's how I used to play him, at least. Um, Enid, that's this other guy. He wanted to go back for him, but I stopped him. <laughs> that's fucked up. No wonder Enid said he do not ever want to see his face again. And uh, we haven't seen Connor since. But why didn't Enid go back and just help him by himself? You know? Why didn't he go back and help if he's so fucking heroic, you know? So he was scared of the dogs? Maybe Paige is scared of dogs, too. Hmm? Maybe he thought he would only have a chance if it was both of them, or some shit. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, we haven't seen Connor since. My voice had become softer and softer as the story went on. Now the silence rung in our ears. Well, mine, anyway. I couldn't speak for Cap. She broke it. Whoa, well, that's intense, she said. As if she was reviewing a movie or something. But I had more to say. Now that I started, I might as well finish. <laughs> yeah, well, that bastard Enid doesn't know when to quit and forgive. I snarled. I looked down at the blackness of the floor, then back up again. Maybe he could have saved Connor. I don't know. I was just trying to look out for him, you know? Trying to look out for Enid, I guess, not for Connor. She reached out and put her hand on mine. There was something so sweet in that. This is, like, literally, like, a dude's fantasy. Like, you go out and you meet a chick, and, like, within, like, an hour, she's, like, at your place and, like, emotionally invested in you and interested. Like, when does that shit happen? <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa, too. When does that shit happen? Like, when does a chick bring bring a dude home and he's, like, nice and caring and, like, doesn't just say, like, so you want to give me a blowjob? You know? Like, anyway. Um, blah, 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 blah. There's something so sweet in that. She was cold, but she was soft, and I didn't brush her away. I know was all she said, but she didn't even need that. Her gesture was enough. I know. That's what she said. Um, time jump. 
It's funny because like it actually says time jump like on the page. Like nowadays I just put, and even back then too, I usually just put some like squiggles and stars to like indicate a time jump. But it literally says on the page like time jump. Hey kitty cat. I turned quickly around but no one was there. The air was foggy and cold. I was hurrying home. It was the morning after Cap had come over. Over here, pussy boy. <laughs> oh god. Called someone else. I recognize those voices. Ugh, you guys said you wouldn't come around here anymore, I hissed. I could see them now, the three of them. They were closing in, stepping out of the fog. I kept turning around, trying to keep my eyes on all of them. But the one I was really watching was Enid. Hey, that's unfriendly, he said slyly. We're just paying you a visit, old buddy. Um, thought you never wanted to see me again. He cocked his messy, short, raven haired head to the side. Well, I guess I changed my mind. Then out of nowhere, the guy behind me shoved into me. I wasn't expecting it all, and I stumbled forward into the other, and he shoved me to the ground. Enid snarled, pulled me up by the shoulder of my shirt. He threw me back into the circle, now pulled in tight, and I could see everyone. The problem was that I couldn't do anything about it. Every time I tried to fight, I would get passed to someone else. But they could scratch and kick. They became sort of a blur. I only knew Enid because the other two guys had darker skin, but he was pale like me. I swiped at him but missed, and he shoved me a little too hard. Instead of in someone else's hands, I ended up laying on the ground, and as soon as I felt still ground under my feet, I jumped and ran. Just ran. I don't think it was cowardly. They had me outnumbered three to one. I could hear their footsteps behind me, or maybe it wasn't even them. But I didn't look back till I tripped and fell in a gutter, a block from my flat. <laughs> and by then, they were nowhere around. Time jump. I slammed the door behind me and just stood there panting. I was wet. I was bleeding. I was a mess. Hmm, sounds hot. Paige, what happened to you? The sound of another voice inside almost gave me a heart attack. Exclamation point. I jumped around like a drunken maniac, trying to glance in all the places a sniper could be hiding. A sniper in your house? I don't think you're that important, <laughs> but I know what he means. He just means like a surprise attack. And then a blonde girl came towards me out of the dark. My flat's always dark. Well, most of the time anyway. There's no electricity. <coughs> There's no electricity, but he has this nice place all to himself. No roommates. Well, he obviously doesn't live in the Bay Area. Cap, how'd you get in here? But she didn't answer. She just walked up to me until she had my back against the door. What did happen to you? Uh. I nudged past her, headed towards the opposite wall. Now we were in opposite positions from when I first walked in. It was that bastard Enid and those other sons of bitches. I spat. I licked the side of my hand and started to wash off. When I looked up again, she was back, standing in front of me. You're pretty lonely, huh? Isn't it rough having all... Uh... The people you thought you could trust suddenly want you dead? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that probably would suck. A coy half-smile was on her face. Her eyes were playful behind her glasses. What was she playing at? Uh, I guess, I answered slowly. Oh, and also, like, the thing about having no electricity, like, you know, this is the thing, like, when, when I was 14 years old, I didn't think about all this shit, like, you know, I didn't fucking know, I just didn't think about it, it's like, that, the fact that, like, okay, you don't have any lights, okay, fine, no lights, but, like, you also don't have, like, um, you also don't have, like, a fridge, you know, no fridge. Uh, I mean, he's a cat, so maybe he just eats those rats, you know, but it's like, maybe he doesn't need a fridge, I don't know, but, like, there's that, and, like, no, like, um, maybe no hot water, I don't know, for showering, but he licks himself, so, I don't know, you know, I'm sure that when I was writing this, I thought that saying that somebody had no electricity, because they just didn't feel like paying the bill or whatever the fuck, I'm sure I was just thinking, like, yeah, you know, um, no lights. And the internet wasn't as big back then, so I probably wasn't thinking that he had a computer or anything like that. I mean, computers are still kind of like, only some people had them, you know? Back then they weren't like as universal as they are now. And, um, so I probably was thinking like, yeah, you know, it's fine. No lights. Big deal. No lights. He, he can have sunlight in the day, and then candles or some shit, and maybe he just goes to bed at, you know, when the sun goes down. Where does this motherfucker work? What is his job? 
You know? I mean, like... <sighs> anyway. <laughs> uh, maybe he can see in the dark a little bit because he's a cat. I don't know. It's just funny because it's like, as an adult, you know more things, you know, as a kid. Like, saying somebody has no electricity, I knew, I, I know, I just know in my heart that I thought that meant just no lights. But I didn't think about, like, the fridge, the stove, the hot water, the, like, you know, whoa. Are, are you going to want to have a toaster? Are you going to want to have a blender? Any of these type of fucking things, you know? Just didn't think about it, you know? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, where is this shit? <sighs> a coy half smile was on her face. Her eyes were playful behind her glasses. What was she playing at? Oh, uh, I guess, I answered slowly. I mean, I'm not all alone. There's Naro and there's you. And suddenly, this was really freaky. She just snapped and whacked me in the side of the head and started yelling and ranting. So this chick you just met, like, now she's hitting you. One day into your, into your relationship and she's already abusing you. That's nice. Naro's not real. He's not real. You made him up, you idiot. He's in your basement. He's not real. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. I was really into, like, people realizing they're crazy, you know? That was, like, really hot back then. Where it's, like, all this weird shit happens to you, and then in the end, it's like, oh, yeah, it's because I was crazy the whole time. Like that sh movie of Repulsion, I think, or something like that. I've never seen it, but I think that's what it's about. And things like that, um... But now the whole like, thing is tired. Like, the whole, like, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. Or, like, I was in a crazy house the whole time. Or, like, I'm just insane. I'm schizo. Da -da -da. I, all that shit is kind of, like, played out now. You know? So I think it's not as popular. Ugh. Okay. Where is it? Um, her yelling was giving me a headache. And it didn't even make sense. I had my hands over my ears, but I couldn't shut her out. So I did the only thing I could. I struck at her. The only thing I could do was hit her back. <laughs> That's 14-year-old logic right there. But I hit nothing. Her voice was gone. I opened my eyes and uncovered my ears slowly, looking around. Where did she go? I don't know why I looked down. It's like my eyes were drawn there, but at this point nothing made sense anyway. And what else didn't make sense was I saw laying on the floor. It was a doll, but it looked just like Cap. I had no idea what to think. I couldn't hear anything but the blood in my ears, or the silence ringing, or something like that. <laughs> I like how it says that. I ran down to the basement. I spent most of my time down there. It was cool and cozy. Best of all, it was dark. Maybe he- so maybe he doesn't pay the electric electricity bills because he doesn't want light. I guess that's what I'm getting. I raced down the stairs, and like a fool, I tripped and fell down the last couple. Holy shit. A man can be killed that way, as um, Dracula would say in, uh, in, uh, a bad, in Costello Meet Frankenstein. <laughs> um, where was it? I put out my hands to break my fall and landed on my hands and knees. The virtue of being cat-like. There was something on the back of my left hand. Something red. No, not blood. My other hand, I pulled back my sleeve and looked at what it was. It was a red hourglass with spider legs, a tattoo, on the back of his hand. Why is that symbol in all your clothes? I remembered asking Nara once. What does it stand for? He laughed. I don't know. You should. You sewed it on. Did um? Did Connor teach you that? Yeah. It's not your fault, you know. I was just trying to look out for him. I picked myself up from the floor and went to the far corner of the basement. I could hide there. Sitting on the floor a few feet off, in front of one of the rat cages, was a white-skinned doll. He had cherry red eyes. Okay. He made dolls of all his friends. Because he felt guilty about that guy getting attacked. Okay, I thought the other guy... This is the end, by the way. Okay, so I thought Connor probably went to the crazy house or something, but it seems like he got ripped apart by dogs or some shit. I don't know, this story's kind of open-ended, which I, I think is a good thing. Yeah, that story's not bad, but it's just, that story is just, like, typical ninth grade. Like, I'm happy that that story exists for me to read now, because it's really an insight into, like, being 14 years old in the year 2000, I keep wanting to say 20, 2004. This is what things were like, okay? Just kind of trippy, psychedelic, and the idea that any tiny little 
psychological trauma, however small and tiny, can turn you into a complete fucking psycho. And, um... He didn't notice his own tattoo on the back of his hand. I mean, I guess that's the point, is that you're seeing things through his eyes. So certain things, it might be obvious, but he's ignoring them, you know, like the tattoo. I mean, you literally have the phrase, like, I know it like the back of my hand, you know. And he didn't see he had that fucking tattoo. I mean, I know the idea is, like, it's not that fucking stupid. It's, like, the idea is that, like, all these things he knows. Oh my god, 40 minutes? Holy shit, whatever. He knows that the tattoo is there. He knows all this shit and that, like, you know, he's sewing these dolls to be the, his friends or whatever bullshit and then picturing them to really be there. But, um... But, um... Uh... He's just ignoring it, you know? Like, every time he sees that tattoo on the back of his hand, he's just not... He's just blocking it out of his head because he doesn't want to think about it. He wants to create this new reality and any evidence he sees to go against the new reality that he wants, he just kind of blocks it out, because he's like, no, that's not the reality I want. This is the reality I want over here. I'm gonna work towards this one. This is the one I'm gonna believe. This is the one I like. This real reality over here, like, fuck that bullshit. I don't like that shit. That shit doesn't serve me. My fucking friend got locked up or maybe killed. I don't even fucking know. He said redemption, so I don't... Is that, like, the ICU? Or I don't know what that fucking means. I don't know what that fucking means. I'm guessing it meant that he got ripped apart by dogs and then he was so fucked up in the head after it that he got sent to the crazy house, but that's just me, like, knowing myself as a kid and, like, the type of shit that I would put into a story, but maybe just not say explicitly, you know, or whatever. Um, I don't know. It was interesting. It was interesting. I mean, there's a lot of focus on, like, uh, you know, psychology, psychiatry, all that bullshit. I mean, if anything, there's, like, more of a focus now, I guess, but just the whole... Uh, it's different. Like, people are still obsessed with all that stuff, but it's different now. Like, the opinions are, like, total 180 from how they used to be. Like, it, when I was a teenager, it was more about, like, holy shit, like, look at how fucked up people can get. Like, holy shit, man, that's fucking crazy, man. Now it's more like, Yes, everyone is crazy. We all just must manage our stress and eat healthy and make sure it doesn't overcome us, you know? It's kind of, it's very interesting to watch the progression of, like, the way that society, like, thinks and feels and talks about issues like this, you know? And, like, I know probably some of it has to do with, like, I was 14 back then and now I'm 30. It's a little different, you know, perspective of, like, me as a human, but being, like, you know, basically a kid to well into adulthood, you know? But, um... But still, still, I can't help but feel that, like, opinion, public opinions, I mean, we used to have these fucking young adult fiction books, and they're probably still around, about, like... Like, there was this one my sister read that really used to piss me off, man. My sister was, like, totally in love with it. It was about this chick that, like... I don't know, she met some guy who became her friend, and then it turned out she was imagining that guy the whole time because when she, her mom was a lawyer and when she was little she got kidnapped because her mom prosecuted some dude and he was pissed, so he kidnapped her daughter, and then she totally suppressed, like, the fucking memory all these years and didn't remember it until now. Then, of course, in the end, she wound up getting locked up and she was drugged, and then in the end they always have this fucking, like, authoritarian ass-kissing, like, conclusion where it's like, I'm so happy that they gave me the right drugs and brainwashed me back to society so I can be normal again. Like, that was more like the opinion back then. But nowadays, I feel like because, like, I don't know, it's just different now. Now the opinion is, like, back then it was more like, yeah, like I said, like, focusing on people who were, like, it's almost kind of like a return to, like, the 70s, obviously I wasn't alive back then, my dad told me that, like, yeah, the, there, for a time in the 70s, there was, like, a big national obsession with, like, schizophrenics and people with multiple personalities and this book Sim Cymbeline or Sim Sybil or something about this chick with all these personalities and people got really, really fucking into that and that, that also bled into, like, um, like, demon possession movies and stuff. Like, basically any situation where people are not in control of themselves anymore um, people got really interested in that, so I feel like that kind of had almost like a revival, like in the early 2000s in the emo age, with like the new generation rediscovering all these psychological fucked up things, 
and um, the drugs and um, the trauma and all that bullshit, and they they started getting into it and making it cool for themselves in the same way people did in the 70s. And um, But now it's mutated into more of, like, it's grown. So now it's the idea is more just like, yeah, everyone is crazy a little bit, but, like... There is not, we're, there's not going to be big drama anymore. There's not going to be, like, if, like, it's not going to be some dramatic scene where you run out in the middle of the street screaming and there's fucking people chase you and, like, you know, capture you and uh, drug you and all this shit. Like, it's like, we're not going to really do that anymore. We're going to, well, now we're more just kind of, like, talk about, like, wellness and meditation and bullshit like that. But I don't know. I mean, I'm just fucking going off. Obviously... I'm sure everything exists at all times in history, you know, I'm not trying to say, like, only this existed then and this exists now. Like, uh, everything exists all the time. You know, everything exists all the time. I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of drama going on at all stages of every time in human history always. But just, like, what's, what's in your face? Like, what's popular? What's people talking about? And what is the general, like, fashionable like, image of something, you know? I don't know. I'm just going on now. Um, if I read some more stories from high school and middle school, more high school, I think, though. High school and college. I know that in college I started really getting into, like, the fucking angsty bullshit. I was kind of past, like, the, um, the, like, I'm crazy, I'm schizo, it's all in my head. Like, I was kind of past that, but then I got more into, like, characters who are depressed or, like, um, you know, exploring more, like, uh, abusive relationships and, uh, things like that. I don't know. Anyways, better end this now, because I'm almost 47 minutes. I'm gonna wait till 47 minutes and then hit it right on the dot. Two, one. There it